Okay, so uh, Harish, uh, over to you. You can uh, proceed with the hands-on session. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So either you can follow along the video or I will simultaneously do here. So if you have any doubts, you can stop me and ask. Okay. First, I will start from downloading itself so that you have a clarity on how to extract everything. So first, hello, Harish. Ask. Yes. Uh, will there be any difference between uh, using WSL and Ubuntu? No, uh, actually, there is a slight difference that only the in the terminal. So if you are using uh, WSL, you will first initialize with the command WSL and then use it or open a Ubuntu terminal. But if you are on a Ubuntu machine directly, then you can just open it. But uh, there will be one small change when you download and copy paste, which I will demonstrate right now. So the main thing is, when you are creating a folder inside your case directory, after you download the zip file, extract it and place it in a convenient way such that all the command works. So you have to navigate through your command prompt and go to the case directory and then follow along. So that is the only change which you will be having to face. So otherwise it will be fine. Sure. Uh, during the tutorial, can you please mention wherever we have to be careful? Yeah, sure, sure. So I'll start from downloading. Okay, after you download, this is the most careful part which you have to be. Uh, while extracting, you have to use uh, either the WinRAR, the file like WinRAR, and use extract here. Or you can use the Windows default of extract all. So once you do this, you will uh, have a case file which looks something like this. So when you double click on this, it will have these two folders. So you have to make sure that you are copying this folder and not uh, this folder. For example, you will when you extract it, you will have something uh, like this. Okay, you will have something called the moving airfoil. When you double click on it, it will have another folder called moving airfoil. So this is what you have to copy when I actually tell you to do. So I hope this is clear. Because only if you get this right, every other command will work. So now I will open the drive link which I have shared and open the PPT so that we can follow along. So the first thing is we download the case files and I'm going to open a command prompt. So either you can just search for Ubuntu and uh, open the terminal or you can open a command prompt. So I'm opening a command prompt and then I will type WSL, give enter. I will enter into the Ubuntu terminal. So this is the main change which you will be facing if you are on an Ubuntu machine directly. Instead of doing all of these steps, you will directly open a terminal. And then uh, if you are having multiple open forms on your machine, you have to specify the alias. In my case, I am loading open form nine with the alias which I have mentioned. But if you do not have other versions, one, if you have only open form nine, you can skip this step and follow from here. Okay. Now, uh, first we will navigate to the working directory, which is using the command cd foam run. Harish, can you please repeat your last line? What did you say? Okay, if you After are having multiple, yeah, if you are having multiple open form versions, you have to specify the alias. So if only if you have multiple open form versions, you will have to do this. But if you installed only open form nine for this uh, workshop, maybe you will not have multiple open forms. Then you can skip this step. But if you have multiple, then you have to specify the alias and load open form nine specifically so that this. Uh, simulation will run. If you do not have, you can skip this step and start from the CD foam run. Okay, the next command would be to create a directory, which I will be doing using the command make directory airfoil case. So I have created the airfoil case, which we can see from here. I have a folder called airfoil case. Now I will enter into the folder by typing the command airfoil case. Okay. Now we are inside this directory. You have to make sure that you are inside this directory specifically. Here you will have your username. Then what we have to do is open an explorer and paste 
the file which we downloaded initially this moving air coil so this folder will have two files folders called komega assistance palette almaras so you have to exactly copy this folder moving air foil and paste it in this directory so this one okay uh, is it hiding this one okay i hope it is clear now okay once you have pasted this in this directory you have to go yeah, is it uh, for everyone or uh, actually in the ppt it is telling that it is only for uh, uh, who are using wsl no uh, the... we are using directly ubuntu uh, it's coming that explorer.exe command not found yes you instead of using explorer.exe you will directly open the file location which is this location inside the run directory there you are creating a new folder called your file case once you enter this you have to paste the file which you downloaded so that is the only difference yeah okay after this it will all be same there is no difference okay now we will see what is the next thing which we have to do we have to enter the case directory using this command so i will do cd moving air foil now if we see we have two turbulence models as uh, professor explained we, we are going to do two turbulence model namely k omega sst and spalat almaras so each of them has two more folders inside the k omega sst has case files for two separate reynolds numbers and again spalat almaras has reynolds number of two different things so for demonstration purpose in the ppt you will find only the uh, tutorial for k omega sst for specifically re1 e6 but if you want to follow any other things you just have to enter the folder accordingly and you can follow along but again to keep up with the ppt i am going to do k omega sst at re1 e6 but if you just want to enter spalat almaras inside re1 e6 or re20 e3 you can do so using the cd command it is up to you but for uh, tutorial case i'll be doing k omega sst and inside that i'll be choosing re1 e6 so once we are inside this directory everything else from the ppt should work regardless of it is wsl or ubuntu machine okay the next thing which we have to do is copy the 0. original file to 0 so uh you can find this using your explorer as well you are having um if you are finding zone.identifier files you can safely delete it it is not a problem uh you will get this issue if you are using a windows extract all feature but if you are using something like winrar you will not ideally get this problem so choose accordingly and uh, you can safely delete the zone identifier files it is not a problem at all okay once you go inside you will find something like this so we will have zero dot original constant system and there will be two files called all run and all clean we will look at it look at that later and you will also have para dot foam to open the para view file if you already have para view installed you can double click this to view the results after you run the simulation but if you are typing para foam it is mostly not going to work because this uh, has a lot of colors and paraform doesn't allow that so it is better to install paraview and uh, follow along so we will shift to the ppt and uh, follow the commands the next thing which we have to do is copy the 0. original file to 0 after you copy the command you will find all the files like 0 0. Dot original all clean all run and everything now again we can uh, do the block mesh so first we will look at what is in there inside the block mesh either you can open it through your uh, terminal itself like notepad.exe space system slash block mesh dict either you can do that but if you are working on a windows machine then you can enter into the system folder 
and open the block mesh dict using notepad or visual studio code or notepad plus plus as you wish uh, i am personally preferring vs code so i am opening using that if you open the block mesh dict you will find more codes like this it is okay if you don't understand any of these right now because you are not exposed to advanced block mesh yet but you will find something like this naka0012.obj so this is the uh, object file which is a wavefront geometry which we have downloaded from existing geometries and we are using that geometry to mesh it i think during the tutorial someone raised a question if we can download a cad model and then mesh it using block mesh so this is one such case where we are using block mesh to mesh an existing object so we have kept that specific object in the location of constant geometry so this is the standard structure open form understands so here we have placed the object file and uh, we have all the other files under system for control so we have viewed the block mesh dict uh, it is okay if you don't understand any of these right now you will learn it later but the next main thing is extrude mesh as professor explained open form cannot actually do a 2d case so everything in open form will be converted to 3d and then we will define the boundary conditions of front and back as empty so that it behaves 2d when you post process so this extrude mesh will take the 2d block mesh which is created and it will convert it into a 3d so you can again explore the extrude mesh dict So you need not worry about whatever the code is inside. The main objective here is to explore dynamic mesh dict. So we will do accordingly. Then uh, we will see set of functions which we are going to use here. The first thing is force coefficients, which will automatically calculate the coefficient of drag, coefficient of lift, and coefficient of moment such forces. So uh, there are set of parameters which you have to give as input, such as the patch. Here, the airfoil is the name of the patch, name of the body on which we will be calculating the forces. So we have defined that and we have the free stream density, the lift direction here, it means X, Y and Z direction. So the geometry is prepared in such a way that it is on X, Z plane. So the lift is on Z direction, the drag is on X direction and the center of rotation is at 0, 0, 0. So these are all defined based on the a mesh we have prepared so we will view the mesh before we run the simulation actually so the pitch axis is uh, through y because the geometry is in x z direction and these are the just what we learned through the uh, turbulence models so the free stream velocity which is mag u infinite is one the length a reference length and the area reference is estimated to be one here okay that is all about force coefficients. We also calculate residuals like we do in commercial software like ANSYS, but we cannot view as we do, but we will uh, see that finally. And we can also calculate Y plus. You have the files, you can explore the library later. Okay, now uh, we, we are going to see what is there in the constant folder. We already saw that we have the geometry in the geometry folder. Other than that, we have uh, three files, namely the momentum transport, transport properties, which is always there, and there is dynamic mesh dict. Okay, before that, is uh, everyone following along? Does someone have any problem, right? If you have some problem, you can please turn on your mic and tell me before I proceed because uh, now we are going to see the dynamic mesh. Hello? Yes? Yeah. What is the role of Y plus in meshing? Actually, okay. Five plus, uh, five plus yes, ten is uh, if less than five, then a uh, yes, actually in yes. a sub layer and if five plus value is I get uh, it. Size between five to thirty. The explanation is beyond the scope of this tutorial, so yeah. we cannot be explaining y plus right now because we have to do turbulence models, two turbulence models, and sort out the bugs. So please, uh, you know, check out the documentation and see how y plus influences the simulation so that is beyond the scope of this simulation or tutorial so kindly read through the documentation thank you sir. is there any other doubts regarding the uh, case setup as of now okay if there is nothing i'll just proceed along the momentum transport file 
will actually talk about the type of turbulence model which we are using. So we are using RAS, which is Reynolds Average in Egress Stokes. And under RAS model, there are different models uh, such as K epsilon, K omega SST, spallet Almeras. But in this tutorial, we are going to use K omega SST. If you open the momentum transport file in the spallet Almeras folder, in place of K omega SST, you will find spallet Almeras here. That is the difference. This uh, transport properties will give you the value of uh, kinematic viscosity. So the way we set up this file for this tutorial is that we chose a velocity, we chose Reynolds number and a length scale. So the velocity chosen as one meters per second and chord length is one meter and the Reynolds number chosen is uh, two different Reynolds number. One is one E6 and the other one is 20 E3. So based on that, using this formula, we can calculate the kinematic viscosity and uh, instead of using a standard fluid with a standard kinematic viscosity, we are going to set the velocity and the characteristic length and we are going to choose the kinematic viscosity. So I am changing the kinematic viscosity here. That is the new uh, by symbol. We are uh, entering it. The value will be 1 E minus 6. So either you can just type 1 E minus 6 here or you can type by decimals. It is up to you. Open form can understand both of them and we are running a Newtonian simulation. So we have mentioned Newton and this represents the dimension where this is M, L, T, which are the three major physical dimensions which we use to represent SA units. Okay. Then the main file which is we are interested in for, for this tutorial is the dynamic mesh dict. So we will explore this. You could recall this uh, setup from professor's explanation. First, we are calling the motion solver called as the dynamic motion solver FB mesh, meaning finite volume mesh. So we are calling this uh, function so that it understands the rest of the codes which is present below. So the solver library, which is defined here, it is called as a library FB motion solvers.so. So this is a standard way to uh, call a function, uh, call a solver. The motion solver, which we will be using for this tutorial is interpolating solid body. There are many other uh, motion solvers as well. You can check the documentation if you want to explore. And the solid body motion function which we'll be using is oscillating rotating motion. So this is the motion function which we will be using to oscillate the airfoil. As Professor said, there are many uh, ways to you know perform the dynamic machine. You can give your own path or uh, target lines or you can use existing functions to define the oscillations. So in this case, we are using oscillating rotating motion. So again, the patch is called the airfoil. The center of gravity is present at 0.5 on the x axis, 0, 0 on the z axis. The inner distance and outer distance, I will explain after we perform the mesh. So the oscillating rotating motion coefficients are the essential functions, which this function will understand. So these are the parameters which we have to essentially give us input so that this function is properly called and it performs the simulation. So the main parameters are the origin. We have to define the origin of rotation. In this case, the mesh is made such a way that the origin is set at minus 0.25 on x-axis, 0, 0, 0.0 on y and z-axis respectively. The amplitude is given as 0, uh, 15, 0, which is xyz, but you can just give 15 alone and it will still take it. It does not require any specific direction, but uh, since they have a syntax, we are using this. And omega is taken as 6.28. This is just a value of uh, 2 pi. It is taken in the USA units of uh, radians per second for omega, which is angular velocity. So this is all about dynamic meshing, which we will be performing right now. If you want to explore this, you please do not touch uh, these parameters and origin as well, but you can alter the amplitude and omega to see uh, you know, much faster oscillation or slower oscillation. So that is all about dynamic meshing as well. Now, uh, first we will make the mesh and we will see how the initial values for the turbulence are made. So if you have just followed along till here, please uh, comment yes or something in the chat box. Or if you have doubts, you can tell me because next we are going to proceed with making the mesh. 
yes the center of gravity uh, is depending on the geometry which you are having i will explain it while viewing the mesh so the center of gravity is important it uh, it is essential to uh, declare it here so that the simulation is realistic by physics so yeah it is important for specific geometry it is fixed if you are going to change the airfoil and if it is shifting by the coordinates in the 3d space then the center of gravity will change so i assume that nobody else has any doubts so we will see how to perform the mesh first we will open the terminal and we will make sure that we are in this folder exactly k omega sst re1 is 6 to follow along here but if you are using spalat almeras or different re make sure that you are in some reynolds number folder so that block mesh actually works so when you type ls you have to see all these files so only then the block mesh command is going to work regardless of which turbulence model or reynolds number you are using so you just type ls and you must be able to see all these files now i will type block mesh this will make the mesh so make sure it ends without any errors or problems then immediately you just do the extrude mesh so extrude mesh will take the 2d uh, mesh which is prepared by the block mesh and make it into a 3d mesh so again this has to end without any errors so now we will view the mesh first then we will see how to run the simulation so to view the mesh you can just double click on paradoform file which is already there or uh, you know you can type paraform if you are on a ubuntu machine but if you do not have a para view already please install it else you can't view the mesh properly okay once you give apply on the left panel you will see something like this so we have to change the way we view so you have to press the plus y normals here it is on the top only if you press that we will be seeing because our geometry is made in such a way that it is on the x is a plane so we have to view it on the y normal through the y normal plane positive y normal so we are pressing this command now we are just seeing a surface right so to view the surface along with the mesh you have to press here the surface and choose surface with edges so once you choose surface with edges you can see the mesh okay this is a structured hexahedral mesh which is uh, suitable for uh, running an airfoil case and we can also do more mesh morphing which we are intending to do in this tutorial it is not an overset case just in case if you want to know this is a mesh morphing case so this is the airfoil body now we will see how we can view the boundaries here on the left panel you can uh, see these things we are by default it will have the internal mesh selected but if you just want to view the inlet you can select only inlet and give apply so this is the inlet patch in this case and the outlet patch will be in this area and uh, as we were explaining how open foam takes only 3d and not 2d you can see that there are two planes here the front and the back so these two are defined as empty so that the mesh actually behaves 2d which we will explore further while we are exploring the boundary conditions now the major thing which we are interested in is the body the airfoil so this is the airfoil which we will be working with okay after view after you view all of these if you want to reset press on internal mesh reset uh, deselect everything else and press apply now you can press the uh, y normal plane and get to the default value view so this is majorly the mesh now we will see what was the inner distance and outer distance which we were seeing in the block dynamic mesh deck so this is the file of dynamic mesh deck here you can see there are two parameters known as the inner distance and outer distance so inner distance refers to the distance from the origin or any reference point if your uh, body is not at the origin of the moving coordinate system attached to the body which undergoes motion so to understand simply you can see the value here is 0.01 the mesh here the center is at approximately 0.01 where there is a deformation here so you just imagine that mesh is rotating 
and it will have a anchor point here which is inner distance and for outer distance which is uh, defined as 4 here so this will have an anchor point here so whatever mesh morphing is happening the mesh motion is happening it will be, be because of the motion which is happening on this area from 0 0.01 till the 4 so you will understand this better when we actually run the simulation and see how the mesh morphs so until now it is theoretical and you just know this is the inner distance and this is the outer distance approximately okay if you couldn't make the mesh please tell me what problem you are facing you can turn on your mic and tell me what are the problem you are facing right now yes i can see your annotation but i couldn't hear anything okay if you have any specific part that you couldn't understand because i was going fast please tell me that i will clarify again okay so converting uh, 2d mesh to 3d mesh is through a single command once we type the block mesh so i have typed the block mesh here it will create a 2d mesh which is not something which open form can solve so we have to just type extrude mesh command so that the 2D automatically gets into a 3D mesh. Uh, extrude mesh is a folder which is already defined. We will see that. So this is the extrude mesh dict. We are taking, this is a file which we are not actually interested or we can't explain it right now. So what this file actually does is, it will take the 2D mesh prepared by block mesh and it extrudes into a 3D mesh which the open foam can use and solve. So that is all about the extrude mesh and that is how we change the 2D mesh to 3D mesh. I hope it is uh, clear now. So the mesh morphing, okay, after the extrude mesh, we did not do anything as of now. So once the mesh is done, we will start with the simulation. Now we have to learn what is parallel processing. In many cases, parallel processing will uh, come in handy when the case is very large. So your system, the CPU which you are using will have multiple cores or uh, known as the multiple CPUs, the central processing unit, the chip will have multiple cores which can do computing works simultaneously. So we call that cores so these cores will be different for different processes which we will be using so in my case i am using a processor which has eight cores but if you do not know how you can find the number of cores your uh, processor has you can follow these commands from the ppt or you can just follow along what i am doing right now so first open your task manager so after you open the task manager on the left panel you will be having something called performance tab. So press on the performance tab and uh, press CPU and scroll down and you will find the number of cores. So these are the number of parallel processes which you can run. So if you are intending to do a parallel processing, then you must remember this value, which uh, you should be very careful of, else it is the simulation is going to throw error. So I will give you two minutes time. You just check the number of cores you are having if you want to do parallel processing. Else, I will tell you what to do but after we calculate the turbulence values. Okay. If you are on an Ubuntu machine, please check the chat box. Uh, Viraj has dropped a command which you can use to find the number of cores in your PC. Okay. Now we will see how we are calculating the initial turbulence values which is the k omega in this case. But if you are using spallet almeras, there will be another file called new tilde. But first we will see how k and omega is calculated. So you can check the documentation. I have already shared the link of this. But if you just want to find, you can uh, search for k omega, SST and open form. Then the, you can press on the first link. So this is the value which professor was explaining here. The K is turbulence kinetic energy, which is calculated by this formula where I is taken as intensity. In this case, it is 0 0.05 or 5%. 
and the u reference the free stream velocity in this case is 1 meters per second so when you plug in these two values we will get the k value which is 3.75 10 power minus 3 but how is this value useful where we are going to define it so we are going to define these in the boundary files so if you remember zero is for the boundary files so when you go inside the zero files you will find all these five files the u which is velocity the pressure k omega and nu t so based on what you have done previously for uh, the ico form simple form cases you will have an idea on what is the pressure and the velocity file but to run the k which is a part of the turbulence model k omega sst once you open this file you will find something like this here we will have a command called the internal field uniform 3.75 10 power minus 3 so this is the value which we just calculated using the formula it is also mentioned here so this value is what we are defining at the inlet for boundary condition and at the outlet as well and for the wall in this case airfoil it is taken as kqr wall function it is one type of boundary condition which we can use for k on a wall boundary okay so this is the value of k which we have defined similarly we also have the omega file so inside the omega file we will calculate it using this formula so it is k power 0 0.5 divided by c mu power 0.25 l so the c mu is a standard constant valuing 0 0.09 the case the value which we just calculated which is this value 3.75 10 power minus 3 and l is the reference length scale in this case it is 1 so when we plug in all these three values we will get the value of omega which in this case is 0.11 you also have the formula here just in case if you want to calculate it on your own and similarly we are also defining it at the inlet outlet and on the wall as well okay since the turbulence specific dissipation rate which is omega uh, we are defining it at the airfoil inlet and outlet when we put dollar internal field it will call the value from here so we are defining the value here which is uniform 0 0.11 and we are calling this value here using the command dollar internal field so whenever or wherever you mentioned dollar internal field within that specific file it will take the value from here so if you change the value only here all the values will be changed here as well automatically you don't have to change it manually so that is the purpose of doing this way so the other boundary condition is the new t so new t is turbulence viscosity so it is a practice to just take it as zero as initial value through wall inlet and outlet so as i was saying the front and back is always taken as empty so regardless of what the boundary is the front and back is given as type empty and in the k as well you can see the type is empty the omega as well the front and back is kept as empty so this means the front and back is defined as empty so that the mesh will behave as a 2d mesh so if it is a wall then it will be a 3d mesh so this is all about the boundary conditions now we have to run the simulation so i hope by now you already uh, checked the number of processes which you have so that i can uh, explain how we can do the dynamic meshing okay now i will tell how to edit the uh, decompose par file so how you can find the decompose par file is that the location of the file is under system so under system you will have this file called decompose par edit you open this so here you will have a value of 8 by default when you download the case but this is the number of processor which my computer has but if your computer has only four cores or six cores then you have to change the value accordingly here and you also have to change the n the n here de depicts the number of subdomains you want in the x y and z direction respectively so this is a geometry which is there in the x z plane so we are discretizing the x direction by 4 and z direction by 2 but not discretizing anything in the y direction because it is just a 2d case anyways so we are discretizing the x in 4 and in 2 but if you are just having less number of course what you have to do is you might have to follow this 
so that it is suitable so if you have four number of cores you just change the yarn to this instead of four one and two you can change it to two one and two if it is six then you can change to three one and two if it is eight you can just leave it with the four one and two so the rule of thumb is that when you multiply x y and z you have to get the number of values so you can see in this case two times one times two will be four so the similarly two times one times two will be four times one times two will be eight so that is the uh, rule of thumb you have to follow just in case if your processor has 12 cores so what you have to do is uh, four one three probably so you have to make sure that you are discretizing properly now how to discretize actually if you are uh, going to run parallel processing first you have to open your command prompt so if you can see again we are in the same uh, directory so i am typing ls so we can make sure that we are in the right directory now here i am going to type decompose par so once i press this or type this you can see something like this so all the number of cells which you have will be distributed in some way to all your number of processor in my case it is uh, 8 so we are having 0 to 7 you can see processor 0 to processor 7 which is 8 processes so it is splitting on its own you don't have to do anything other than editing the decompose part file so once you decomposed you can start running the simulation but till now if you have any problem with decomposing just please tell me and can you okay, just I, show the last last which one how to solve okay the last command is decompose par with p capital okay so after you run the decompose par it will look something like this so after this we can start running our simulation directly but if you are not running a parallel process just in case if you are not doing the decompose par at this point you can directly type pimple foam with f being capital and press enter and your simulation will start right away but it will take a lot of time since it is running on a single core but since we are trying to do it in a multiple cores you have to uh, type this command which is also there in the ppt you can copy paste or you can follow along so it is mpi run space hyphen np then you have to specify the number of processes so in my case it is eight so i'm typing 8 but if it is less or more you have to carefully mention that so we are uh, what we are doing is we are calling multiprocessor so which has a command mpi run then hyphen number of processors 8 then the solver which is pimple foam in this case so pimple foam space then you have to type parallel so it actually runs in parallel so everything is just one line you can also find the same in the ppt so first we run the decompose par then we are trying to run this command so if you are having less number of cores please make sure that you are changing this value okay once we type this command in the command prompt you can just hit enter and the simulation will start right away it will take quite a while between that time if you have any errors or any problems any clarity please turn on your mic and ask me before the simulation ends. Hello. Yeah, hi, this is Yashwan. Okay. Actually, I am facing some problem regarding the simulation, right? I have done, okay, uh, okay. I have done till extrude mail. After extrude mail, if I am opening the para view, there is nothing to show over, in, over there. So, will you please help me out? Okay. Have you installed para view already? Yeah, yeah, I have installed already. Okay, uh, did you press the apply on the left button? Apply? Uh, there will be a green color button on the left uh, named apply. So you have to press apply to view the mesh. Wait, wait. Opening Paraview directly, right? Yeah, yeah, you have to open Paraview directly. And uh, okay. after you press apply, then, then you will okay. get, yeah, then you have to press the Y not. <laughs> then we have to press y normal let me show you
after you open para view mm-hmm. this button they have apply here will be highlighted with green color you have to press this then you will see something like a line sort of thing on the window after you see that you have to press this button on the top so the plus y plus y. yeah so that will make your geometry in the uh, x is at normal plane sorry y y normal plane which is x is at plane so the geometry is made in x is at plane but by default the open foam loads in z normal so you have to change it by pressing this button then you can see the surface okay, okay. after that you change the surface to surface with edges to view it hello okay after after y plus then what we have to select uh, yeah that's it then you can uh, view the mesh by selecting surface with edges over here so this part will show as surface press that you will get a drop down box no there is nothing to s- show over there there is nothing to show in the drop down menu can you please uh, drop the screenshot on the chat so can i share it. my screen uh, i don't think that is permitted but you can शादी स्क्रीनशॉट ऑन दी चैट सो वी आर गेटिंग एन एरर व्हेनेवर वी आर रनिंग दिस पैरेलल लाइक कन्वर्जेंस क्राइटेरिया नॉट फाउंड नो कैरेक्टर कन्वर्जेंस क्राइटेरिया फाउंड एंड फाइनली इट इज गेटिंग दैट इन वर्किंग एमपीए रोबोट कॉजेस ओपन एमपीए टू किल ऑल एमपीए प्रोसेसेस सो देन मे बी यू जस्ट सिलेक्टेड द रॉन्ग नंबर ऑफ प्रोसेसेस so that could be a uh, reason uh, no actually i changed the number of processes and uh, we have six cores i checked it okay uh, actually it is getting like uh, 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 no convergence criteria found pimple no convergence criteria found actually in the message a lot of uh, big message is there Can then no conversion yeah i will i will drop hello ishwant uh, did you check have you placed a space between the small e the where where in the in the column is there a space good mesh okay. okay okay if there is a space please remove it yes anyone else okay actually the simulation is over so we will view the results so it will be convenient to view the results uh, there is one last command which we have to do which is reconstruct par which is uh, already mentioned in the ppt so you just have to reconstruct everything because just we just decomposed everything into eight different parts now we have to reconstruct everything into a single uh, simulation file so i will run reconstruct par and that will start to merge everything into proper simulation files which we would have got if we had run in a single core process okay after the reconstruction is done we can view the results so what i am going to do is uh, you know just double click on the para view file okay so if anyone has problem viewing in para view so this is what you have to do please uh, check carefully once you double click para view you will not see anything here so first what you have to do is click on this green button apply on the left so once you press apply it will take some time to load this then you will see something like this uh, line alone then you have to press the plus y button on the top that will take you to y normal plane in this case that is x is at plane so to by default it will show you the pressure but if you, you know want to see just the mesh moving change the pressure to solid color on the left top then from surface you can change to surface with edges then press on the play button so this will make you to see how the mesh is actually morphing i'm sorry to disturb you i think uh, so many members are getting the same error sir that is pimple foam error 
can you please check it uh, we actually sent uh, the pics of that error if you are using open form 9 exactly then it shouldn't be a problem actually because uh, that function is there only in the open form 9 how to know the version of the open form we are using is there any command to know um you can take any you tutorial can just case. type uh, simple form hyphen h just, or something which will just tell which version uh, will yeah, just run a default tutorial case that will tell you what version you are running for in this case you can see that it is saying version 9 so similarly that will show anything else other than this uh, tutorial because it will not show properly Sir, I got it. I got it. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm not sure whose window is this. The one I am presenting. My, uh, my, my, my. CGP. Yeah. You just have to go one it's directory okay. back. Yes, so sir. Yes, sir. Just... I did it. Sir. Okay. When doing a uh, reconstruct para, I have to go inside again. No, no. You don't have to go anywhere. All the commands which we are running is on this exact directory. You don't have to change your directory at all. Everything is run in this directory. Uh, simple form. Oh. If I am uh, running, the system is not running. No, just check if you are on this right directory. Only then you will see the results. Can you show yeah, the command Harish? again? Reconstruct par. Yes. So the reconstruct par will be this. You can also find that in the PPT. Yes, okay. uh, Nikita. Can you please repeat why we use the extrude? Okay, uh, Open Form uses the method called finite volume method, and it cannot understand two D mesh. Okay, so two D okay. mesh is something which is beyond Open Form's capability. But block mesh, the mesh which we are using or which we are creating using block mesh command, is a two D mesh. So when we type extrude mesh, all the mesh here, which you can see here, right, everything here, so all these will be extruded to some extent you can see some thickness so to create this thickness we are typing extrude mesh else it will just be a 2d mesh which open form cannot understand so when we type extrude mesh that 2d mesh will be extruded into a 3d so that open form can solve yeah thank you so if you want to check your mesh morphing you can press on the play button and uh, For each time step, you can see how the mesh actually moves. Okay. Um. So, hi, Harish. During the previous uh, lecture, Chandan was saying about two types of mesh morphing. One was exponential, and one was the other one. I don't remember the name. Which one is uh, this? Uh. What is the other one actually? I think uh he said about overset and uh, the uh, mesh morphing. Uh, this type of mesh morphing is known as the uh just a second it is called interpolating body okay so you can find here so it is called interpolating solid body motion solver so we are using that type here okay all right thank you okay to view the velocity how velocity changes you can again change to surface and instead of solid color you can choose velocity your color my colors might be different because of different para view and also you can play here to see how the velocity plot changes you can actually see the mesh is moving that's it about the simulation part if you want to save this as animation you can go to file save animation give any name probably animation choose mp4 format click okay and you can change the frame rate uh, 10 would be ideal 10 or 15 would be ideal then you can press okay to save animation so you will get that as a video okay one last thing which we will be doing is uh, you know plotting the graph of coefficient of drag and lift if you can remember we added a function to calculate force coefficients which is present in this uh, folder called the post processing inside that we will be having three folders for force coefficients residuals and y plus the one which we are interested in right now is the force coefficients it will be a dot data file dot dat file when you open this it will have something like this uh, 
six columns. So the first column is time, time step. The second column is coefficient of moment, then coefficient of drag, then lift coefficient. Then there are other two components of uh, the lift coefficients. So to plot this, you can either use Excel or Sheets or Python, but there is a utility in the open form itself, which is form monitor. To plot this on a logarithmic graph, you, you should mention form monitor space hyphen L. Then we are going to navigate it. So the folder is post processing folder. Inside that we have force coefficients. Inside that we have zero and inside that we have the co force coefficients dot that. So after I type this, I can give enter and we will get a GNU plot, which will look something like this. So sometimes it crashes based on the system. So that is the force coefficient file, which we are getting. Uh, sir, is this code will not uh, work in open form seven? Uh, I'm not sure if the dynamic mesh deck will open. So it has interpolating solid body, which is you no know, works only in open form nine. When I tried, it did not work in open CFD version. So you can try it. Uh, if it doesn't work, you might, it will show you what kind of uh, models which you can use on the command prompt itself. So you can try replacing, read the document do documentation, then you can explain it. Uh, uh, how much are, uh... That is uh, how to update it. Uh, is there any tutorials in the online like that? Uh, we can uh, can we update that open form seven to nine? Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, one one minute. Uh, so uh, the installation instructions that we have given to you, those are for open form v nine. So if you follow that, you should be able to uh, install it. So we were very selective in telling you why to use open form v nine because as Harish pointed it out, right? That when we move from one version to the other. There are certain changes, you know, open form will always try to, you know, make simplify things, change things. So there's some files which are working in the previous one may not work. Some functionality will change. Some functionalities will be clubbed, you know, so based on that, uh, what works in open form seven may not work in nine. And if you're using say a version higher than nine, then also it will be diff difficult. So that's why, uh, you know, we were very specific in mentioning that you install only open form V9. So that whatever cases case files that we give to you will work without any problem. So for people who have installed some other version, we request you please install open form uh, V9 so that you will be able to follow without any problem. Uh, so if you do yeah. this today, because in later, uh, later on again, the same problem will keep coming to you in other sessions as well. So please okay. install v, uh, V9. The instruction sheet has already been given to you in the email. So that uh, the instruction sheet that was given was for open form version nine. Okay, if uh, that is all, we are uh, running out of time, so we can wrap up the session. So thanks a lot, Harish. Uh, yes. I hope um, all the participants have understood and uh, will actually continue to practice the commands and uh, execute everything that you just learned. Yeah, yes, who is this? Part? Uh, it's part, yeah. When I'm doing the form monitor, post-processing, force coefficient, I'm just getting a flat graph. Okay, uh, did you type the force coefficient the home monitor space hyphen? Yeah, yeah I, I copied the same from the PPT and I'm getting a flat graph. So did the simulation run till the end? Yeah, the simulation run and I was able to see everything in Paraform. I even got the video and everything. Then uh, you try plotting some other software like Excel or Python or Google Sheets because sometimes when you plot will scale up everything. You can actually zoom using your scroll button okay so is is there a way to uh, all right okay so if i go in there and uh, copy the dot dat file and open it in yeah, Excel, you, it can, it okay. you can copy the dot dat file import it in any plotting software then you can okay it. thank you bye bye everybody